Dad. What? Who's Michael Wayne Jones Jr.? It's the case that I'm working on that I'm going to be uploading to YouTube in the morning. Can I do the intro? I think you just did it. He used his wife's phone to text and post messages on Facebook to keep up appearances. I had her phone for a while, and I, um, you know, I would, I would text and pretend to be Casey. And um, she actually reached, like, we had a recliner in the, in the living room, reached and grabbed after the bat um, and kind of, you know, you know, broadside me or whatever. Kids, yeah, they're asleep. Where do they sleep at now? Um, the boys have a bedroom, and then uh, the two girls uh, sleep in the in like in the living room um, area. Okay. So when I I've been to the house, I went to the house earlier today. Um, when I walk in the front door, obviously you walk in, you're in the living room, mm -hmm. right? And then the bed, there's a bedroom to the right. Closest to the road. Yes. Is uh, that the, the boys. that's the boys' room? Yes. Sir. Okay. And then the other room on the other end of the house is obviously y'all's, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I, there was nothing left in the house as far as furniture or anything. Um, where was the chair at situated in the house? Uh, you first walk in the house. The uh, the recliner was right there until the left. Okay. Uh, where did that recliner go? <laughs> you trying to kick him? <laughs> he freaked out, Mike. Uh, Old man against teenager. <laughs> uh, what's the matter? You Where are you going? Thing? Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I left it there. Okay. Yeah, I didn't take it. Okay. Yeah, I didn't take much out of there. September 11th, 2009, and we're here at uh, South Bend Memorial Hospital, and Casey is going to have a baby. That's right. Turn the camera on so everybody can see it. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> we got uh, see is dilated in these, so we will uh, continue to wait, and uh, we're going to be spending the night, so... We'll get back to you in the morning. Okay, take care. Bye. So how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling all right. I'm kind of nervous. Nervous. Yeah, just a little. Yeah. I want Cameron to be here so we can see him. <laughs> so. so then it's summer, so the boys, um, her boys end up going with their father for a couple of weeks. So I have the girls. Just me and the girls. When did you take the boys to, to dad? You know, they came back uh, before the tw the weekend before the 22nd, okay. and they were gone for about 10 days, so maybe the the 12th of August or so. Okay, that's when they went to Dad's about the 12th, so a day or two after this happens. Um, 
what did you do from was you know approaching boys come back how do the boys end up back there do you mean obviously dad would normally call text how would that happen um it was previously uh with a drop off it was determined what time you know what um what day uh, time frame was up in the air, so he texted, and uh, I went and picked him up. Okay. Uh, so he texted you or texted her, or what's you guys' relationship like uh, as far as with him? Uh, we haven't talked much. Um, not really any relationship there. You know? Okay, so there's, uh, it's really not. no communication. Yeah. Okay. So just uh, I got the boys. I'll, where do you guys meet? Um, we met at the um, uh, Lake Square Mall, Lake Square Mall. Okay. Where does Where does uh, their dad live? Uh, here in Georgia, somewhere. Okay. Yeah. He did live in Florida for a while. He moved there, moved here a couple of years ago. Okay. And uh, they've been going back and forth as far as custody goes, and when he can have him or if he can't, and he just kind of fell off the face of the earth and came back into the picture. Really? So you get them back about the end of August? Yeah. And I know school's starting. We just Are we talking about the beginning of August? Because I think all, I think school starts like August 12th or something like that, if I remember correctly. August 11th or something like that. Yeah, yeah, school starts around then. It was like the 10th. Okay. Um, so they're with dad for about a little less than a month, right? Yeah. I think they were there for, like I said, I think 10 days or two weeks. Okay. Does he text her phone? Does he text your phone? How does that work? Um, I believe at first uh, he texted uh, her phone. Okay. I think we communicated the second time through my phone. Okay. It may have been through her phone. And obviously, at that point, you got to keep up some sort of ruse that, that right. you're her, right? Right. Okay. So what happens then? You go and get the boys? You go out to Lake City and get the boys? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, met back up at um, the mall in Leesburg. Okay. okay. His parents live somewhere in Florida. Okay. Um, and then... I think it's about a week. Where are the girls at this time? Um, they were back with me that at that point. I had um, dropped them off at the, my mother-in-law's. Miss Nikki? Nikki, yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, I think I had them back. Um, and then, uh, so you get the boys back from dad, and school starts. Have, and school's have, going on for about a week. Yeah. What school do they go to? Uh, I enrolled in um, Fruitland Park Elementary. Okay. Because you worked down there. There we go. Well, we lived in uh, Leesburg. Okay. Um, the last school year. Okay. And end up getting. We didn't want to put them in Leesburg. We should want to put them in Leesburg, so we ended up putting them in Fruitland Park. Okay. Did you ever take them to school? No, not this year. So they were enrolled in Fruitland Park, but never made it. Right. Okay. And then, what happens with them? First of all, thank you for everybody being here. Uh, we're here because of the missing uh, mother, along with her four children. Obviously, most everyone here already knows that. Um, we have identified her um, because my detectives have tirelessly been working for the last 24 hours to find them. But unfortunately, true evil poked its head up here in Marion County. That's about the only best way to describe it. Um, Michael Jones was located in Brantley County, Georgia, following a traffic crash. That's where the mother's body was found in the vehicle. And then we have also pretty much found 
after interviews, after all the everything at the scene has led that we have finally uh, locate, located the remains of all four children. Um, it, as a father, as a parent, it breaks my heart. As a sheriff, it angers me to no end. Something to this degree, how a human being could even do this. What I can assure you is the hard work of my detectives of putting stuff together to ensure that this person returns to my jail and will serve, justice will be served upon him. Now, as far as I'm concerned, as the sheriff of this county, underneath the jail ain't good enough. He has no right to walk the face of this earth. I hate to be him when he stands before the Lord. Do you, do you go, are you going to work still? Uh, yeah, I, I work. Um, like, I work under the table for a guy right now. Up in Jacksonville? Uh, no, uh, in the villages. So you're driving I'm down here? Yeah, right. we're a couple of days. Yeah. Are you driving the van back and forth? Are yeah. driving Sarah's car? Or? No, no, no. Okay. Um, obviously, I have to ask it. I, I got some pictures of the inside of the house from when the uh, cleaning people showed up to clean everything up. And it looked like you were getting ready to pack up to move, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of our stuff was still packed up. Um, from from moving there? there? Yeah. From How long there. had you guys lived there? I moved in April. Okay. So April, May, June, and then July is when everything happened. Yeah. So just a couple months. Yeah. What's you guys' relationship like? I mean, is it is this an ongoing thing where you guys are at each other like this, like fighting, or...? Um, it just got worse, like, you know, little things all the time with her should come at me, and, uh, we, you know, we argue and, you know, never really got physical. Um, we had 13 people living with us in Leesburg, really? Nikki, and my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and my sister-in-law has six kids with our four, and it was pretty tumultuous, I mean, it was, it was rough, um, to where we had to call the police on, on Nikki, actually, and she slapped her granddaughter across the face, and just, things got out of hand, but, uh, we were in the process of selling the house pretty much for nine months or so. And the first bid that she got, the first offer she got, we packed up. So stuff had been in totes for. Okay. Was that your house down there? Oh, it was hers. It's my that wife's. Was, that was your wife. Yeah. That was Casey's house. Yeah. The what was that address? Twelve. Yeah. Uh, two zero. Or one eight. Yeah. Two zero one eight line. Yeah. Yeah. By tree. Okay. Yeah. Um. So. So you're staying with Sarah. Is she is Sarah asking about the babies and what's going on? Or um, no, I mean I, I would keep the kids and she would, um, you know, go to work and uh, on the weekends uh, do Uber and stuff like that. And so there wasn't much conversation about it, you know, here and there. But you know, I would tell her that you know Casey and I are separated and. And she's with her mom right now, so. Okay. So you kind of just covered that for us, yeah. And did she think much of it? Was she excited that you were back? Are you guys dating again? Or no, no, no dating. She has a boyfriend of a couple of years, and he's up in Vermont. Nothing. Okay. So you guys, you're just kind of crashing there and yeah. spending time with the kids. Yeah. Okay. And well, I was there for the the hurricane for that week. You know, just thought, hey, we used to come and stay with us. And you're in a trailer, and, and, you know, I told her that the girls were with their mother. And, you know, she said, well, come stay with us because, you know, they're freaked out. They just moved down here a few months ago. 
Okay. So nothing happened in the hurricane, obviously, but I still stayed there. Um, and her boyfriend was there at that time? Uh, no. No. He's okay. He just he lives okay. in Vermont. Um, but uh, so you got pretty much she's she's under the impression that Casey is was staying with mom and yeah. the kids are all healthy and everything's good. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Um, yeah. Do does Nikki and her sisters and everybody start calling? What what's going on with the? Ph I know she's got a phone, right? Yeah, she what's had her a phone. So I had a, I had her phone for a while, and I um. You know, I would I would text and pretend to be Casey and what's Casey's phone number? Um three five two three six zero eight one four zero. Okay. And what uh do you know what provider that is? Yeah, um it's Sprint. Okay. Yeah. What's your cell phone number? Or what was your cell phone number until recently? Three five two five three zero nine seven three zero. Okay. And so you're you're pretending this whole time to be Casey on, obviously on Facebook too because you got some like collages that you made or something on Facebook and yeah. posted yeah. them and also spread for your yours yeah same one it's another same one yeah. okay. so then you're answering text messages back and forth and yeah so that's tough being and. and I uh, I trashed her phone. I don't know what day it was, but I was actually down up by the city hall, looking down at the police department, which I believe is Marion County Police Department. Okay. Um, I sat there for several hours with uh, my daughters and turned myself in. You know. Yeah. Um, Smashed her phone in that day and, and threw it in the dumpster. City Hall, I'm trying to think. Is that so maybe Bellevue? Like, yeah, maybe. By Bellevue. the checkers? Yeah, well, um, Wells Fargo's over there or something. Like yeah, there's a checkers and a Wells Fargo. Yeah. And you kind of look down the hill at the police department? Okay. Is it, did you throw it in the trash? Did you throw it in the bushes? No, I threw it in a dumpster. It was uh, adjacent from. Uh, across the street from the city hall across the road across 441 yeah it's a look like an old gas station or something like that what stops you from turning yourself in just this basic fear that you know you're gonna end up in the situation you're in right now yeah now are you driving around in the van this whole time I have to go back to, um, did you, you didn't dispose of anything out of the house? Did you clean it? And it, do you drink? No, I drink beer, yeah. Okay. Drugs or anything? No. Um, I'm on medication, but. Are you on medication right now? Mm. What type of medication are you on? Uh, um, blood pressure medication, and then I have a medication for depression, Wellbutrin. Okay. Is that affecting the way you're thinking or anything right now? You seem to be pretty level-headed. Yeah. I don't think you're... Out of your house, yeah. go south. Go right, go south. Probably two miles, maybe. It's before you have Walmart. Before Walmart. Before Walmart. Before 42? Before 42, yes. Before 42. Okay. okay. And is that, I mean, do you think it's still there? Or do you think they've had a trash pickup gun since then? I, I would assume they had it. It's know. not been within the last week, obviously, because no. you ain't been here. So. Um, so you clean all that stuff up, and is 
there, um, can you share with us her, Casey's Facebook name? Her Facebook name? Yeah. Um, is it Princess? Princess? Yeah, it's in Casey Princess. What's her password for Facebook? I do not know. How did she just she log out because it was on her phone? Yeah, she kept it open. Okay. Um, So, <coughs> where's your phone at? They, they, uh, the deputy took it. Is that the same team. phone? You still have the same phone from all that time? You just don't have any minutes on it? Right. It, uh, the, uh, bill is overdue and they turned it off a couple days ago. Okay. So that's why when I called you a couple times, it went straight to voicemail? Yeah. Okay. So, obviously, you were staying with Sarah. Were you with her last night? Um, I was up there, yes. Up there at her place. Yeah, up up in Jacksonville. In the, is she staying in apartments? Yeah, she okay. has an apartment. Did you guys hear my phone call and stuff last night? What was the deal with all that? Um, she woke me up early morning and asked me what was up with, you know, is there any reason why Marion County would be, you know, looking for you? And then I just tried to spin stuff, spin stuff, and finally I said, you know what, let me just. Get on the road. We spoke to Marion County investigators today and they believe Michael Jones did drive to Jacksonville to visit his ex-wife with the victim's bodies in his van. He was playing with his kids every day. He was taking them to the pool. He was talking about a future with them. The ex-wife of Michael Jones says she never saw red flags or any type of sign that he would hurt his own family. Sarah Jones claims he came to her place in Jacksonville several times, including the day Casey Jones and her four children were reported missing. Uh, it would just kind of, we just kind of deduce that yes, if he did on his way to Georgia, stop in Jacksonville, that yes, he would have had his bodies with him in the van. Marion County deputies say Jones killed the victims and drove around for weeks with the bodies before dumping their bodies in Georgia. The tragedy left Sarah devastated especially since she shares three children with Jones. It haunts me every day. Um, the images I have of them running around my apartment. Um, yeah, I mean, why them and not us? So, did you talk to, did you tell her what in the heck was going on? No. She told us that, uh, when you talked to me, or when she talked to me this morning, you were still there. Is that true? When when she spoke to you on the phone, yeah, I was there. Yeah. What was going on? Just trying to figure it out. <laughs> you were trying to figure out what I had going on, and yeah. okay. Did she talk to you? Did, did you tell her what to say to me, or? Uh, no, I I um. One point. She thought it was looking for just me, and so I said, you know. You've seen me or whatever, you've seen Casey, you've seen everybody, you know. So, yeah, I guess I did tell her. Okay, so basically, the, what was the deal with the McDonald's? McDonald's. She mentioned something about being at McDonald's. She met you at McDonald's on Friday or something to exchange like, the kids. Oh, that's usually a meetup spot. Okay, so that's your usual meetup yeah. spot. We're going halfway. Okay. So... After that phone call, how long after that phone call do you leave? Um, I don't think I left out of uh, Jacksonville until like three. Okay. Yeah. So you were there for a while. When, after I called her the first time, I mean, did you, did you ever tell her exactly what was going on? Or you just kind of, I got to get out of here? Yeah, I just told her I got to get out of here. Did you get out of there after I called the second time? Um, around that time, yeah, we said she'd come back. She left the house and come back. And uh, we talked about, um, you know, she said, well, you know, why'd you have me tell them this? And, you know, they're calling me back. I said, well, you know, let me, uh, let me try and go deal with it. So. And you called me, right? I did call you. Why did you come? What do you think was going to happen today after you left? What was the plan? 
Um, the only thing really I had in plan was just to get out of Florida for now, or cross the border here and set a rest stop and you know try and think. <laughs> I'd like to say that you know sit here and kill myself, but you know that would, that's not it. You know, just running. So when I, whenever I got that, whenever that second call came in, it was, you knew it was probably time to get going. Yeah. And you left and didn't really have a plan because obviously you weren't planning for detectives to start calling you. Did you see any information about them missing or anything? Um, no, I didn't see anything. She told me that um, there was some stuff on Facebook. Sarah did? Yeah, Sarah did. Yeah. Does she, does Sarah, does she communicate with Casey's family? Um, no, no, no. So it, it would have had to been something that we posted or something like that? Yeah, well, I think it was something that was reposted. Okay. Through family members. So she's, she's, uh, Facebook friends with my mother and stuff. Okay. I assume they... Did you call your mom at any point and tell her what in the heck was going on as far as... No, my relationship with my mother's been rocky for a long time. Okay. I try to... Keep it, you know, together as much as possible. But I, I message her, you know, a couple times a week. But other than that, I haven't actually spoke to my mother in a long time. They hear her voice. So, so you get up here into Georgia. What may you, is is there any family, any friends, anybody that's this way? That no. So you're just driving. You got money to dr to go anywhere? No, it's, I had you know forty bucks when I left, and so I figured. Put some money in the tank and drove, and I could I'd get across the border, like I said, into Georgia, and sort of rest up and think, you know, before people came after me. You know, think. So you pulled down this road here, and, and at what point did you decide what you were going to do with that? I was, I'm driving, and I just keep seeing, you know, pull offs, and I was like. I don't even know. Like, it didn't cross my mind, really, other than just to pull off. So I pulled off, went down the road, took a piss. But unfortunately, there's nothing I can do to bring those children back. And how someone could do this, I do not know. Nor will I even try to guess why someone would do such evil to a child. I'll open it up to questions. Where were the remains of the four children found? Right now, we're not disclosing that. Um, I don't have the specifics personally. Um, I want everybody, before we get fully into these questions, which is a good one, it's a good question. I may not answer every one of your questions because what I'm going to assure is the integrity of this case is to its highest so that when we do go to trial on this individual, no one could poke holes into this case whatsoever. But they have been located, and I don't have it exactly. When we were there, we spoke with neighbors who uh, gave their opinion that they thought that this had maybe happened a month ago. Are you able to talk to timing of this, when he may have uh, killed either his wife or these children? We, it is unclear at this time, okay? Um, what we do know is, uh, based on family, uh, they've been missing for roughly about uh, four to six weeks. Uh, it was reported Saturday night, and obviously we located and, and turned this over within a 24-hour period. Um, and from there, um, the reporting, how long and all that, why, don't know. The Brantley County Sheriff's Office told me that he gave him up, himself up pretty quickly um, when they encountered him in the car and told them that Casey's body was in the car. Can you confirm that? Yes, that is the truth. Uh, do you, can you speak to what that means moving forward with the investigation that he did provide this information uh, about her and the children's remains uh, so quickly? Say that one I'm more sorry, time. I'm sorry. Can you speak to um, what this means for the investigation? I know you all were hoping for, for a different outcome um, with these kids, but he led you all to the bodies pretty quickly. Obviously, it changed the direction of our investigation. You know, our hopes, like you 
already mentioned, our hopes was to find them somewhere, that he left them, uh, but alive. The direction now is obviously homicide, and it's a straight focus. Uh, when, we, when he immediately told them, our office went into action, sending de uh, detectives immediately there uh, to do to conduct the interviews. Uh, search warrants for the van has been obtained. A warrant for him has been obtained. Um, so we've already put everything in motion and now where we have to do is and citizens and people need to understand is what I've already mentioned is the integrity of the case ensuring that we put every piece of that puzzle together um, may not know why but we will do our damnedest to find out how it was done what is he currently oh go ahead I was gonna say sheriff I know that um, Kyle was telling me that the um, was a bolo out for their car, her car. Yes, ma'am. And then how did they connect him with the car? They found him and... Well, obviously when you put a, all of us in law enforcement, we share information. So when that's put out there, because of the traffic crash that he was involved in, that was the immediate alert, okay? That was their first contact. First contact of law enforcement after the information was sent out. What is he being charged with right now? I know it was initially second degree homicide for his wife. Now. How many counts and where his charges? Currently, it still sits at second degree murder uh, for her. The other ones were still working with the state attorney's office. Sheriff, can you tell me more about the crash? How, uh, no, ma'am, I do not know anything about the but crash. It was itself. after he was involved in a crash in Georgia that. Yes, ma'am. The body, Casey's body was found in the car? Yes, ma'am. Did he say anything? Did he. He probably said some stuff that I'm not privy to at this moment, okay? Um, and I, and if I did, I probably wouldn't want to get into it. I'm going to be frank with y'all. Because uh, all we need to know is that's evil. And evil did something. And evil needs to pay for what he did. Plain and simple as that. Do you know um, if it's said in the press release here that uh, it's believed, you believe that the bodies were stored in his van for possibly weeks? Uh, was this his personal car, or was it a U-Haul by chance? I know neighbors said that there was a U-Haul in the driveway that they believed. Uh, this is a personal vehicle. Personal vehicle. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any others? Thank you for coming. I mean, obviously, they don't train that. Are you? Were you ever in the military? Yeah, I was. What branch? I was in the Navy. Okay. For um, how long? Five years. Served... Uh, uh, Marines in the medical field, but yeah, no, I'm not trained. You were in the medical field, though. Yeah. You kind of had an idea of things that you could do. Jones is charged with his wife's murder right now, and more charges are pending, according to the sheriff's office. He's also expected in court next month. The charges, as far for the deaths of the children, we believe he is solely responsible for their deaths. And we just are waiting the, the autopsy results and the final um, medical forms that, to come through for us, for our detectives to place those charges on him. And Jones remains at the Marion County Jail without bond. He is also under suicide watch. Tell me about this. This is another question I had. How did you wreck the van? What happened there? Uh, like I said, after I got out of the woods driving or whatever, the GPS was like rerouting me. And so I messed with the GPS and touch screen and I'm looking this way, looking this way and I swerved off the road once and then kind of like, okay, pay attention and I swerved again and it just, that was it, it just kept going down and I slammed into that and that was it. What happened then? Um, I got out, trying to collect myself and figure out, you know, what was injured? up. Hmm? Were you injured? Um, no, anyway ankle a little bit and other than that no i had a seat belt on um, you kind of see I up had, here is that uh, you got i a little, think so yeah no i haven't seen myself but no, yeah. so i had some seat belt, yeah but i um I was wondering what that was. yeah i got you know the powder or whatever it was in my eye it was burning a little bit so i got out and found something to wet my face and you know people were driving by and i was telling them all right and I knew that my phone would at least uh, 
called 911, so I called 911, and I didn't know where I was. I saw two different road signs. I said, I'm in between here. How did you call 911 with your phone? Oh, I get an emergency. Yes, 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 911, yes. So you call 911, and you wait for the troopers to show up? Mm-hmm. What happens then? Anybody else ask you about the smell of the van while you were driving around? It had to have been overpowering. Could you smell it? Yeah, yeah I smelled it. Yeah. And my fault in there. It broke open, and there was some of her stuff or whatever broke open in there. And that made a weird smell, like just clung to my clothes, the mothball, and obviously the decay. And uh, so I, I believe um, Sarah asked me once, you know, what's that smell? And what'd you tell her? I just said there's mothballs in there. Because yeah. I was almost overpowered the other smell on me, anyways. How'd the window of the van get busted? Um, that was prior to all of this happening. I uh, backed into a uh, tiny little oak tree in uh, Nikki's, my mother in law's driveway. When, when all when any of these these happened, were you drinking? Mm. No, no, you weren't drinking a bit. No mm. alcohol, no drugs, no nothing. No. Clear head. Yeah. I'm not going to talk to Sarah and find out anything different, right? I'm not going to find out that this was some planned thing. I don't think it was, but obviously, you know, I got to go back and talk to her. Yeah, I, that sucks for her. Because you already put her in a spot today. Yeah, but um, she knows nothing about it. Nobody does. Yeah. Nobody at all. There's nobody that you confided in that said you knew. I don't have anybody. Huh? Um, what yeah. happened with you and your mom? I know your mom called me, and she told me that you called her and told her some weird story. She didn't think much of it, but obviously thinking back now, she said it was a little weird. What would um, you tell your mom? I don't know. I guess telling her the same thing that I uh, was telling the kids, like, or no, I don't know. What to... Something about Kentucky is what your mom told me. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was for the hurricane or whatever. So she asked what we were doing if we were staying in, you know, in Florida or whatever. Um, and that's when I was with Sarah. So I told them, now we're going to head up to Kentucky. Um, Casey has family up there. We've been there before. So that was the story I told. So that wouldn't have been an abnormal story for your mom to right. her. Right. But you never went to Kentucky, obviously. No. no. I, had, I, I know I asked and I don't remember if you answered. I feel like I, I dropped something in there, but I don't, I don't know. Were they closed or unclosed or? Um, the baby had a diaper on, um, so I guess she would be naked. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. What were the other ones wearing? I mean, had some some bottoms on and no shirt. You saying like shorts or something, sleeping shorts or something? Yeah. And Preston, I think the same goes for Preston. Okay. And what about the oldest girl? She had clothes on. Oh shit. Okay. You left a computer at Sarah's house. Mm -hmm. What's on that computer? Anything? Um, no, that's uh, uh, it was Casey's, but there's nothing on it. Yeah. Why'd you leave it there? Um, so she could have the boys use it. Okay. So you gave it to Casey for the boys. Uh, so sorry. I'm sorry, you gave it to Sarah for the boys. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see if else. Yeah. Stay.
step out for a few minutes if you want. Yeah. Make sure we covered everything and hang tight. Yeah. I appreciate it, Michael. Take that off? No. Yeah, me and my Facebook I'm gonna throw this <laughs> knife at you. I'm gonna throw this at you. <laughs> no, you won't. Finish cutting, babe. Are you tired? Michael, obviously we have to ask you. Um, you know we traveled a long way and all that stuff. We hadn't been talking to you or anything. Um, so the is there anything in the van? that's going to be of any, you know, as far as evidence is concerned, is there anything that you used to clean up? Is there anything? Um, no, I mean, there's, I do have cleaner in the car. Um, it's just using the spray to get the smell down. I can smell that smell, that car for 50 feet after it sat there. Did nobody ever say anything to you about that thing? So you parked it in her apartment complex and it sat overnight and nobody said anything? Never. Could you smell it when you walked out in the morning? Um, once you got up to it, right before you opened it, I smelled it. You're driving, obviously you're riding with the windows down. Yeah. Um, so there's some cleaner in there and I spray it just to keep the smell down. And then um, the balls are in there. Yeah, there's um, uh, fly spray in there. Flies always, so you're flying around. Um, and then uh, there's two knives in there, but I didn't use anything like that. Okay, so the, no. there's no, when we go and obviously we're still in, we got still yeah. a lot of stuff to process and look through. We're not going to find anything other than, there was nothing. No, I, I didn't use anything other than what I said. Okay. Um, What was the, the phone number that you called me from this morning? Uh, that's um, my uh, oldest, Sarah's phone. Okay. She asked me to call you, and she was panicking and freaking out and getting. So, I understand that. Made a quick call just to appease her and then start getting my belongings around. What were you going to do if I answered the phone? Tell you I'd come see you. And then haul out the other direction. Probably. Okay. I understand that. So that, I've been dealing with these guys for a couple hours now since I've been up here. Everybody been nice to you? Yeah. Anybody threaten you? No. Everything that you told us tonight has been voluntary. Nothing was coerced. Nobody threatened you in any way. No. Okay. It's one of those things where you're caught and it's over. Yeah. Are you thinking about hurting yourself? No. I mean, think about it, but there's, you're not going to. I can't choke myself. Probably if I owned a gun, I would, probably would have. Probably would have. Quick and fast, but I don't own a gun.
Meister, bring him over this way towards the camera. There we go. Ooh, what a nice, pretty day here in sunny Florida. Cameron! Hi, Vivi! Hi, Annie! Say to the camera, look! And say hi! Hi, baby! Hi, Vivi! Aw, you say hi! for me they're gonna charge you tonight with uh, whatever charges they have up here and you're gonna have a uh, warrant to come back to Marion County they're gonna transport you back there eventually okay okay so stay here until it that happens I don't know how long that'll take sometimes right. it's a couple of weeks sometimes it's a couple of days it all depends on right. transport stuff like that so. All right. Gonna where's Marion County uh, Jail? Where's Marion County Jail? Yeah, I mean, where, where, where I go um, from? What do you mean? Like, where do I, after being charged here and you said I'm getting transported, where am I? Is it Marion County? Yeah, yeah. I'll give you Marion County Jail. So, if you have any questions when you get down there, you can write me a letter or whatever you need to do, and I'll come over and see. Okay. Yeah. If there's anything else you can think of. So there's nothing. There's nothing buried in the yard. There's nothing no. hidden underneath the trailer or anything like no. that. No. That was my only thought. Was I was gonna just stick them under there, under the trailer. Did you think? Of um, this is my medication. Okay, that's all that's left in the car. What is it? I've seen it's like personal property. Is there? Is that your stuff? Uh, uh, person, um, yeah. some of it's, uh, yeah, it's ours. Okay, it's ours. Yeah. All right, Michael. Yeah. Good luck to you. All right. Sorry, you know. I appreciate your time. Thank you for answering all my questions. All right. You're welcome.
And then on the back of the two questions, it says, do you understand each of these rights as I've explained them to you? Yes. Okay. And number two says, having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us now? Yeah. Okay. Um, obviously, I've been going over all this stuff with a fine-tooth comb, okay? Yeah. Um, and I talked to Richard about the drop-off and the pickup and all that stuff yeah. here recently. Um, whenever... And was that, did you have a Facebook? Because I've, I've looked, uh, I've scoured Facebook. Did you delete your Facebook? No. Since all this is on there? No, I have one. Okay, you still have it? Yeah. Okay. What does your profile picture look like? Um, for life, I can't remember which, what it would be now. Okay. I don't get on it much, but. Um, we've gotten obviously some other reports and stuff and we've talked to we talked to your neighbors, we talked to your family, we've talked to her family, mm -hmm. we've talked to Richard, we've talked to is you know, as many people as we can. You know how big a deal this is. Yeah. Um, so obviously we want to cover everything that we can cover and we wanna understand as much as we can understand as you know, as hard as that is for for people to understand, we still need to know about it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um during our <coughs> investigation um, somebody mentioned some incidents that happened with the boys previously. Had there been any like issues where you disciplined the children or anything like that and it got out of hand? Mm -hmm. How would you discipline the boys? Um, most of the time I would separate them and go to the room, but sometimes I'd spank them on the butt. Okay. Um, other than that, that was it. Would you ever spank them with anything besides your hand? No. There was mention that um, the boys were disciplined. I don't know if it was a spanking or something. I know that when I was a, when I was a kid, I'd get spanked with a bell. Yeah. Did never. you ever spank the kids with a bell? No. Or? I've had that happen. No. Not so, no. No switch from the tree. Nothing uh, like that. No old school. None of that. It was just a hand. Somebody mentioned that maybe a clothes hanger. Nope. But that would have been something that happened when they were with their father. Tell me about that. Um, a couple of years ago, he was investigated. He had the kids for the weekend. It was Halloween, around Halloween, and uh, he uh, the, the boys came back um, in their costumes. And um, the oldest, Cameron, had a uh, Batman costume, like a one piece. And you know he's autistic, and he has trouble like putting, you know. So it's like, hey, take this off. So I did it. And as soon as I did, he was going pee. You need to go pee. So I hollered at his mother. And he had bruises all over his lower back. Really? Yeah, real bad. Um, and it was investigated um, in Lake County. Uh, we lived in Eustis at the time. Um, and they did investigations and I told her she was going to, you know, there was going to be an arrest made. It never happened. Um, you know, they kind of fell through the cracks. I'm not really sure exactly how, you know, what went on with it other than. Um, that I guess he got an attorney and, um, you know, he said it might have happened on a bounce house or something like that, but. Okay, so that was all kind of pushed to the side and yeah. went away. Yeah, okay. Um, but I've n no, I've never used anything on the kids. Okay. I'm trying to think of everything to make sure we covered everything. Um, obviously the one question is, everybody's asked me, why? I know I understand why Casey, why the boys, and why your daughters. Well, um, I'm going to collect your DNA and we're going to get you transported over to the jail. Okay. okay. All right. Um, if at any point during all this you uh, <coughs> decide, hey, I need to talk to Detective, Detective Orland, yeah. don't hesitate to tell him. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, per Florida law, when we arrest somebody for a felony act, we can collect their DNA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to do that now. Basically, what it is is two, it's like a long Q tip. Okay. I'm just going to run it around the inside of your. Your cheeks, there you go. Okay. All right. 
you have any questions for me? What was the what was the thing that let me ask you this? you over to the jail, okay? Right. We're going to walk you out. Yeah. Uh, no attempts to run or anything like that, okay? Yeah. All right, stand up with you. Autopsies for Casey Jones and her four children are set for this week. And Casey's mother, Nikki Jones, says her daughter was an amazing woman with equally precious children. Oh, my God. They were everything to me. All of them. Nikki Jones says she always video chatted with her daughter, Casey Jones, and her grandkids. Through her tears, she remembers her babies. 10-year-old Cameron. 
He was so sweet. He was such a good big brother. Five-year-old Preston. He was just going to kindergarten. Two-year-old Markelly. She was my soulmate. She liked the Bee Gees. And one-year-old Ayana. She was just learning to crawl. But then the family chats stopped. And then the chats to me got weirder and weirder. Like, well, that's not Casey. On Sunday, Georgia authorities found the bodies of Casey and her four children. Casey's husband, Michael Jones Jr., has been charged in her murder. There's no words how she was. God didn't invent that word. She was amazing. She would give her shirt off her back for anybody, anybody and everybody. Nikki, whose maiden name is also Jones, says she used to live with the couple in their Florida home. She claims Michael was controlling and jealous and that love blinded her daughter. He had no right to take those babies' lives. He had no right to take those babies from me. He's a monster. And the monster's got to pay.